Hello and welcome to the Pentaverit spoiler cast and review. And if you think this voice is funny, do I have some great two hours and 40 minutes of content for you? My name is Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. Hey. I started choking on a thing. I'm going to do the normal voice. <laughs> <clears throat> KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. I'm a slightly different version of Dan Video Games. Mr. Feel for Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Still with her! And Dr. Agra from Dr. Agra. I guess 2022 is just the year I see old Canadian comedian dick. <laughs> <sighs> we watched the Mike Myers written, Mike Myers starring, Mike Myers story screenplay and literally everything. <laughs> Series The Pentaverit made for Netflix. It is two hours forty minutes across six episodes. So this is this is obviously a movie they expanded into a, into a mini series and made it much worse by giving it like an additional hour of runtime. Right? That's so fucking obvious. <laughs> Before we get into that, let's go ahead and get initial impressions, couple sentences, and a mouth sound to sort of impart the audience with how you feel about this. Before I do broad stroke summary of what the series is and then we dig into details, we're going to go ahead and start with Mr. Feel. Uh, this was five inoffensive episodes and then it turned into a campaign ad for Hillary Clinton in 2022. <laughs> Fuck this series. <laughs> <laughs> we now go to the other side. We go to Dr. Agro. This was kind of a ham-fisted attempt to prove that you can do Mel Brooks comedies these days and then they tried to weaponize a message into it and I hated it. <laughs> We now go to KZ Excellent. Of all the comedy-related things we've had to cover on this podcast network, this is the single most unfunny thing I've ever experienced. Ooh. Uh, now we go to Bob. This dude, his only thing is making parody comedies and making <laughs> doing funny accents, and he hasn't watched a movie in 20 years, so he only has one thing left. <laughs> uh, Everyone's forgetting to do mouth sounds. Bob, can uh, you do oh, one out yeah, of solidarity? Sure. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Uh, hey, maybe you should respect diversity, but don't, you know, forget to laugh at my funny voice. Hey, maybe you should... Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me explain. We, uh, we should explain the fucking conceit of this fucking oh, atrocious sure. I, miniseries. I, I actually have something prepared. Are you ready? I think oh, every sure. it will become glaringly obvious what this series is if I describe this. All okay. Right. okay, so we have our main character, Ken Scarborough, local news reporter for a Canadian broadcasting channel called Kaka News, C-A-C-A -C -A, News. Uh, that's played T. by Mike Myers. Uh, and he's discovering some sort of Illuminati thing called the Pentaverit. Uh, we also have character Lord Lordington, a really old guy in a wheelchair, played by Mike Myers. Uh, we have Mishu Ivanov, uh, an old Russian member of the Pentaverit. Who looks like Rasputin inexplic inexplicably in 2022. He, yes, he does. Uh, played by <laughs> Mike Myers. <sighs> we have Shep Gordon, a real fucking human being, but weirdly enough played by Mike Myers instead of the real person. <laughs> we have Bruce Baldwin, an Australian media magnate, who's like a parody of Rupert Murdoch sort of thing, uh, played by Mike Myers. We have Jason Eccleston, who is a former member of the Pentaveret, who is into technology and sex robots and a stoner played by Mike Myers. We have Anthony Lansdowne, who's a conspiracy fanatic played by Mike Myers. And then we have an Alex Jones parody called, a parody called Rex Smith played by Mike Myers. Ugh. It's a lot of Mike Myers. <laughs> He's there. It's Mike Myers the whole way down. So, uh, um, remember Wayne's World? Yeah. Y yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey, you know, did Wayne's World. And then uh, later, uh, Dana Carvey destroyed his own career by doing uh, The Master of Disguise. Uh, this is The Master of Disguise. Like, it, it, it has the exact same energy. Yeah, you know, this is revisionist history. You're acting like Love Guru doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, I've never seen that, so it's not real. <laughs> I told you to promise me. I just I watched is, is this. That and that is that just this movie? 
I, wo I worry. I haven't seen it. Based on the trailers, I really led to believe pretty similar. Agra, have you seen Love Guru? I have not. Okay, so no human <laughs> being on Earth but has seen isn't Love. Love Guru like 15 years old? So it's, it's 14, be. yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like Master of Disguise, but even less people watched it. Except the thing yes. is, Love Guru, how Justin Timberlake kind of started to get taken seriously. I don't fucking remember that. Like he was in it I, and I like, oh shit, he can like act and he's funny? Like, wow. I feel like I feel like that turnaround happened with Dick in a Box. <laughs> also, no, uh, more people saw the Love Guru than Master of Disguise. Yeah, I think Love Guru is like uh, Master of Disguise for adults. You know, I feel like it prepared perfectly for watching the Batavarit because, uh, you know, this is a secret I've kept to myself. Only this year had I seen Wayne's World 1 and 2. Hmm. Uh, that's well, good. That's, uh, man, doing that arc and fast forward is really sad. Um... It's really funny, though, because I've seen every Austin Powers, most of which yeah. multiple times, I believe. So watching him evolve his comedy from Wayne's World, because he's repurposing a lot of the same jokes in Austin Powers, watching that happen and it improve, and then watching this happen. <laughs> <laughs> this was like, remember the nutty professor? Yes. Where every yeah. family yeah. member except the child is Eddie Murphy. Yes. Th that was like that, that. That was like a neat twenty to twenty five percent of that movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then they were like, "Let's make it the majority of this three hour miniseries." Yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. I was thinking about that the whole, the whole time. Like when Eddie Murphy does it, it's a stunt. He's doing, you know, usually doing a bunch of very different characters, <laughs> or like all all the people in a barbershop. But either way, it, it's great. This is. <laughs> This is just Mike Myers refusing to let anybody else get a paycheck in his Netflix series. Here's the thing. They needed one additional layer of gimmick for him to sell this script. And that was it. They were like, hey, remember The Nutty Professor? Remember those films where it's one actor playing a bunch of people? This will get those same people in chairs in front of Netflix. Get Mike Myers in chairs for 80% of this movie. I know. Like, oh, look, he's doing all these different roles. Yeah, look at all the old white guy sitting down with a funny voice he's playing. Yeah, it's very diverse. He has so many different funny voices, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, the idea of Mike Myers just not letting anyone else be a character in his own production has me going, was this a scheme? Did Mike Myers get forty million dollars because he was every important character in this in this production? I don't know, but once I started watching the show, I became positive immediately that Key was gonna die because they couldn't afford him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty obvious. And that and okay, that that's a good launching off point to talk about some of the the really oof comedy. Um, how many times they had to make a Key and Peel joke? What, in the two episodes he said, the first time the, they the did it, I immediately went, "Come on!" Uh, there was there was one other one. They didn't say the peel part, but they said the key part, and then they looked at the camera mm. because that's that's that is weirdly enough a strong tangent of this movie's comedy is say what you think qualifies as a joke <laughs> and stare down the camera. Yeah, I think the the that one key and peel joke was funnier than most of the series. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, every, yes. every time they do those long puns, it's the best stuff in the show. There there's there was like a there was like maybe three or four moments in this where I thought that I thought were funny. Mm -hmm. One was that. One was def the Defendo joke, just because I was stunned to learn Defendo was a real thing. What? <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that's a real martial art the Canadian army uses. What? Okay, that's Come actually on. hilarious. Jesus. I actually do not despise the Canadian Mike Myers character. I think that's a good Saturday Night Live style character. Mm -hmm. But this whole this whole thing is bad. Uh, anyway, Defendo was created in 1945 for law enforcement structures. Before that, he had the same person created Combato, which was for uh, oh for use in war. <laughs> Jesus Fuck Christ! You. Wow! Fuck you. Oh yeah, Canadians all, aren't real. Mm -hmm. All martial arts invented in North America are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they have goofy fucking names like like Defendo. <laughs> Punch Fu. Uh, and I thought the joke where the black lady is like, do you think that uh, all these 
conspiracy theories about lizards or to trick you to not pay attention to the real conspiracy theories about governments being evil and the conspiracy theorists who, by the way, if you're going to do something, I don't know. I don't know what fucking has possessed Hollywood to do this. Mm. Stop having comedic relief conspiracy theorist guy in your things about how conspiracy theories are real. Yeah. Quit it. Quit it. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. Uh, like, wh- why am I supposed to laugh at the guy who's right? Because because he, he he's a broken clock. Every everything is a real conspiracy theory in his brain. So you're supposed to laugh at him for the times he's wrong, even though he's really fucking right in this. Yeah, but they're clearly fucking... making fun of a thing, so you have to laugh even though they're correct. Look, we had a character that we pulled out of stock, and not a lot of time or talent to change it. Before we put it in the story, all right? Jeez, that's rough. I've heard of uh, reused sets, but reused characters? That's, <laughs> that's rough. Uh, when it come, you know what? I will, I will go ahead and just talk about the things I enjoyed. Um, I also kind of like the Canadian reporter guy. I, I think that actually gave this a weird energy that I appreciated that's kind of similar to a lot of, like, 2012-ish, uh, maybe 2010-ish uh lower budget indie film that's like heartfelt but has a few mil in it you know where you get a real actor but the subject matter is something kind of navel gazing and i'm like this 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 is just a normal fucking indie film of that of that scale and then they attach this clumps shit to it um (laughs) this clump shit (laughs) i kind of appreciate that as for jokes i appreciated mentor the supercomputer is in the first episode, funny as shit. And it just gets a little bit less funny as it keeps going. Uh, there's that really good uh, introduction moment as well where they explain prior uh, Pentaveret member Jason e- e- Eccleston, which drove me insane. I, was, I assumed the root of his last name was Ecclesia. So when they kept pronouncing it Eccleston, I was losing my mind. Anyways, uh, Jason Eccleston was murdered and key is the new member of the pentaveret and he just goes is this for real and it cuts to rob low on the screen he goes i know what you're thinking is this for real (laughs) and then the member in the room the chef gordon just points at the camera and then points at him like he points at the the tutorial video and then points at him and i'm like this is hilarious (laughs) and that was the high point for the entire series and it happened um 17 minutes in Uh, uh, I think we should go around and talk about all the things we enjoyed though, because feeding this up can really last an hour. Uh, 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 (laughs) Can I go first? Sure, Casey, go right ahead. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Next. Oh, hey, Bob. I'm trying here. (laughs) I'm trying here. Uh, Like even the Canadian guy is steeped in too much laugh at them saying about funny laugh yeah. at their canadian accent and it's like I sorry t- i will go to my grave thinking people saying a boot is hilarious yeah i'm sorry I'm, my my brain doesn't work and it's, it's, it's over <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately it's like a mike myers joke where it's like regardless of whether or not you like the quality of the joke you need to understand it will happen eight more times like that mole joke in the third Austin Powers movie. I I can't. I I can respect making fun of that accent, but I had to face the fact that it was going to happen four more times in 2 minutes. Yeah, see that's the thing. I I'm I'm totally cool with that joke. Uh I think there was a minute and a half long scene that was nothing but that joke. <laughs> yes, it was it just was. it was very straightforward. Here is the plot. We are moving it here's me establishing who I am as a person, what we're going to do and how we're going to, we're setting up the movie. The only jokes in this minute or so is nothing but Canadian accent jokes. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, try to try to be the, positive, Bob. The, the, the uh, Canada being out of focus and fuzzy. Yeah, that was kind of good. That's pretty good. I appreciate yes, that. That, that was a good joke. Three. Uh-huh. Yes, and, four and by three. Hell, that's pretty good. Um, again, this is another thing that happened within the first two episodes only. Uh, after these two episodes are done, the series should have ended. <laughs> yeah, that that happened in the opening of two, I think. No, that's the end of one. That's all the first episode. Oh my god. <laughs> um, y- you know who I uh, favorite character here? Uh, Skip Cho, played by Jen Chung. Uh, <laughs> absolutely amazing because he's like. 
Asian billionaire, and they invite him to be a member of the Pentaveret. And he's like, look, I'm having a midlife crisis. It's either I join this Penta Verde or I go to a gym. <laughs> that was an enjoyable moment. I enjoy uh, his I, performance. I thought that character was fine because I just kept thinking of Andrew Yang every single time <laughs> oh, he was no. on screen. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Hey, Agro, would you like to talk about some things you enjoyed? Yeah, um, I, I can do that. Um, first of all, <laughs> the red robes. Yes. We're outstanding. <laughs> yeah. The red robes are honestly really funny. Yeah, they just erupt okay, into the yes. most boring part of this <laughs> okay. whole series. And they're just great whenever they're on screen. I like they're literally described as being like porn or German in porn industry rejects. Yes, they're, <laughs> they're failed members of the German porn industry. Honestly, I'm really hoping this was some of the smartest, subtlest writing in this series. Because like this... This is the fe oh god it, it's it's the reverse of that fucking meme. This is the future that right wingers want. <laughs> These are souped up Nazi esque physiqued dudes in weird Zardoz costumes. Yes, with just ridiculously <laughs> kitted out bullpup rifles. It's really good because you know the the before this the Petavirate has the Lichtenstein Lichtenstein guard. Which is unbelievably medieval equipment and outfits, which makes zero sense. Well, they're 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 a play on the Swiss Guard. Okay, and they're all like they're all like obviously over forty. Yes, mm -hmm. and then they get replaced by this. Yeah, so that moment's and, and incredible. Then they, and then and then you get the moment, and and this is one of the moments I like where. Uh, all the all the red guard go full auto on on the uh, Lichtenstein guard. Who are hiding behind wooden shields, <laughs> mm -hmm. like wooden tower shields, and for some and survive this onslaught of gunfire <laughs> yeah. with like a phalanx formation of these wooden shields, and then kill them all with crossbows, and it is stunningly graphic and hilarious. <laughs> and that's basically how it would go if you attack the Vatican. <laughs> um, additionally, uh, that Sasquatch suit is awesome. <sighs> The Sasquatch is the it's genuinely terrifying. That thing is a lightning rod for all the terrible jokes. <laughs> oh yeah, no. A lot of the stuff that happens around him is bad. Yeah, no. The yeah. outfit's good. The and outfit is hated. good. But I don't want to watch it shit. Yeah, and that's the only joke they have, and they will keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, about like the third time it happened, I'm like, okay, now it's funny. <laughs> Just watching him it's, shit. Because he clearly, like, the, the way he acts, he's, he's not, he is intelligent enough to use a toilet. He has made the decision not to, because who's going to stop him? Agro, this is how Mike Myers wins. <laughs> <laughs> no, how Mike Myers wins is by hiring Jeremy Irons to do a bit every episode. But it's the same bit. I needed, I needed it to be more. I needed I, to go somewhere else, do something. Nope. I need to check in with Jeremy yeah, it was, Irons. It was once an episode, <laughs> glorious and immaculate. Yeah, it, it, it got, it got kind of old. He is once again the best <laughs> part of a bad thing. <laughs> God I, damn it. it! The joke would have landed way better if the skip intro button actually appeared, because he always he kept joking about it, but it wasn't there, mm -hmm. so you couldn't even hit it. Like they should have yeah. like put it in actually on on the screen. Yeah, then yeah. you can't press yeah. it because it, it would just pause the movie if you did, <laughs> because it's just an element yeah. of the film and not of the uh, episode. Yeah, they should have done that because they already like meta Netflix jokes on here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that definitely is one. Um I was I was going to say a, a weird thing for me to prop up, something I genuinely enjoyed. The soundtrack is 100% serious. Like it <laughs> okay, is Okay, yeah. It is yeah. full of synth. It is so it, uh, full of self-import and a lot of the time that works, but then when the plot goes up its own ass, it sort of works against it. So now everything's completely serious. Where I'm like I actually <sighs> I, I I got a little scared when it started. And they started the music started going. I'm like, this seems like too decent. Yeah, I don't know what this is going to be. And then I settled into what the show actually is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a really but, weird contrast between they have this pretty great soundtrack that is completely original, and then and then licensed music, including the Billy Ellis joke. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> God. Okay, I and think of one more thing i kind of like okay the, 
Yeah. Episode four, he goes to the Hall of Mirrors. I'm just... <laughs> oh, what, God, what, yes. I'm, I'm not even going to call this a spoiler cast or review. I'm going to say five men <laughs> struggle to be positive about the potato. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Hall of Mirrors. Uh, Mike Myers gets a gun mm-hmm. that he has to shoot one of these mirrors with to try and find where the actual person is. The first time he shoots, he hits the dude, and the guy just gets really upset that that happened. It's it's even better because he's been drugged with a rage drug, so he's supposed to be going insane and pissed off, but he's still just the nicest guy, and he's like, well, you literally told me to shoot you. There's like, there's like 30 mirrors in here. I didn't think you'd get it right the first time. And then he calls the ambulance. He's like, yes, the hall of mirrors again. Right. <laughs> he picks up the key like, ow, that hurts. She's like, oh, does it hurt? Just like getting shot and learning your brother got murdered? <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> now, now I need to remind you, audience, we're really trying. <laughs> yeah, no, even that's like d- drenched in the, oh man, laugh at his funny accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really tried to go for like Mel Brooks style wacky. And it it was just kind of sad after a while. <laughs> it was definitely depressing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Got any more? <laughs> sure, I'm just going to switch into irony mode. It wasn't it pretty funny how that guy's last words were about Hillary Clinton's emails? That honestly was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> what? I- <sighs> I, when I was watching this, because because while, while Feel stews, uh, while I was watching this, I went, "Are are we sure this was made recently?" Right, Be- because it feels like something that would have come out in February on Netflix of 2017. Well, I mean, Mike Myers hasn't made anything in like 15 years, so he's just been like <laughs> sitting in a room, staring at a wall. He thinks of a I, joke, I, he puts it in the joke bucket. I felt like I was going insane where that happened. And I went, is this actually not new? And I actually rolled back and went, when did this? Did we just assume <laughs> I this tricked, was new? I tricked you into watching five-year-old terrible Netflix content. Yeah, I know. That, that's where I was at where I'm like, <laughs> it is possible that maybe it just started trending again because of the people posted that one clip. And, and that was why. Because I'm like, come on. I have, a, I have a low opinion of modern Mike Myers, but come on. I'm going to be honest, that scene where he falls and you hear him yell about Hillary Clinton's emails, it sort of got a half chuckle out of me, and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was it, mainly it, just it, speaking it, to every mention of, of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, no. A lot of this humor is not exactly uh, fresh. <laughs> is that it? We're all out? Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I feel like we're creating into the, yeah, tell me about which era of SNL was the best again. <laughs> they they do this bit at the beginning of the first episode where they have a celebrity introduce the pentaveret to the new member. Yeah, Rob Lowe. Yeah. Yeah. And the first time they do it, it's kind of funny because they, they even have a moment of, uh, no one can know about the pentaveret and they wipe his memories <laughs> like mm-hmm. in the video. Yeah, but then they just keep doing more and more with this dude, like for several more episodes, and it's not funny at all. Again, Bob, Bob it's Rob Lowe, so it's funny. No, <laughs> I need more than actor. I don't even know this actor, Bob. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> Bob I'm, has nothing. Bob, I'm sorry. That's the humor here. Rob Lowe was on screen. Laugh, damn you! I was the uh, actress who does the. The other news reports for the Pentaveret inside them, also a famous actress. I didn't know who she was. I assume she was completely fictional. Yeah, I don't know. What do you mean Rob Lowe was also in Wayne's World? Yeah, he was the executive. That makes sense. He was in Parks yeah, and Rec. I, I, he, was in, oh, he was in the West Wing. He's, he's yeah. Rob Lowe. Oh, yeah, I know. I know who Rob Lowe is. I just didn't realize he would somehow <laughs> he, I did he, not connect he's that, that also, with him. Mm. He's also in every Austin Powers movie because he's number two. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. There's jokes about the movie Face Off, and th- th- that was surprising. <laughs> yes, the, the, I, I thought I thought the payoff was funny, where at the very end, the antagonist who survived who survived the final confrontation. And he said he and he literally says, I'm gonna go go on a brisk be on a beach and have the face off surgery, and they show him terribly deep faked into Rob Lowe. Yeah, it <laughs> looks <laughs> terrible. It's unsettling. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and then I'm out. Yeah, I'm just going to have to come back to uh, the supercomputer having a human who's a total asshole from Boston fall into it. So it has a soul inside is really funny to me. It got less funny as it went, but it was pretty fucking funny. Yes, it became less funny when you realized it was a plot point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not just uh, a joke. Uh, I thought it was minorly clever because mm -hmm. the, the whole like first chunk of it is like, no, this key is important because you'd have another vote and you'd be able to control the pin tavern. I'm like, no, you wouldn't because there's no situation where having one additional vote would let you flip the table. Well, they, they see it's hard coded where if three keys are turned because that's the greatest of five, right? That's the majority. You would get to vote for whatever. So by getting an extra key and getting his man on the inside, he now has three. This is somehow, yeah, they have to add more elements to it. This is somehow very important. <laughs> what? A stupid fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're uh, right. <laughs> let, 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 stupid fucking show. I'm not sure that lines up with my notes. Let me go ahead and look at them. Oh, yeah, the highlight was uh, when he said Penta Verde. Yeah, that, that qualifies as a stupid fucking show. It's Yeah, it's a stupid fucking show. Like, hey, what if inside job and look up were both bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh how much would it improve in the opinions of the people here if it didn't have that incredibly awful forced message at the end <sighs> so much uh, uh, honestly like i i wouldn't i would just be like yeah that was bad whatever it was it okay. was largely inoffensive but but it transitioning into this fucking tepid centrist lib fucking horse shit at the very end <laughs> where he's like people should listen to the experts a eh? but the experts should service the people like yeah good fucking it's like it's like they took mike myers out of vacuum seal and he had gone in like june of 2016 mm -hmm. <laughs> like that that wasn't that line wasn't even the right words he wanted for the message he was trying to convey which was also bad yeah yeah i uh, for also every single person on the pr production angle of this was white every single one you how fucking dare you try and do this yeah when you get up high enough you run into the white ceiling when it's like you're Writer, director, producer, every single I producer. Mean, right? Like, like go oh, fuck yeah, yourself. We need, we need more diversity. Like, we need to let the younger generation and more people. We need to include more people. Mike Myers, you are 10 people in this fucking movie. Yeah, I was like, this is a very easy <laughs> argument to make when he literally made the story, created it, did the teleplay, wrote it. Is the main character eight times over? Then there's then there's the fucking element of on the same vein as like the Bro, you wrote a story where the resolution is a white guy becoming the supercomputer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, see, that's an advisory <laughs> role, so it's okay. And also, why did why why does it become like even more Zardoz esque when it's like all women and minorities? I, I like well, where they're sitting in the white room and wearing weird robes. Like that's very bizarre. I don't I don't have an answer for you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, the, the whole scene where they're all, like, taking the pills has this weird double backwards fucked up, like, what are you trying to convey message of, like, yeah, we need to beneficently move out of the way and allow these lesser forms of people to take up an equal position amongst us. Well, well there's, all, there's also, like, <sighs> why is the villain giving a, a fake news speech? Like, yeah. It, it it's so like this was made by a like this was written by Mike Myers a, a semicolon a fucking idiot. <laughs> is this is this like is this like forms you know like Pokemon that is his form of that? I really thought it was going to be like a double reverse when he started talking about how like you know I predicted that the internet would you know go to shit and we had to stop it and they wouldn't listen, but then they didn't do a twist and he's like so I'm gonna sell the supercomputer to Russia. Yeah, what? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Look, he still just wants to be the the biggest millionaire, billionaire ever. Yeah, I get I, it. He's I, Matt Murdock, and he should go to hell. But like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. No, isn't Matt Murdock Daredevil? Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I, Murdoch, I, by by the laws of the catechism, should also go to hell. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, also, there was that scene where the, that's there for no reason about how uh, the Rupert, Mur Mur Rupert Murdoch character is in defeat, and frankly, Mark Mike Mike Myers should be sent to prison for that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I every time we record content, it never occurs to me the moment the feet scene comes up that I'm like, up oh, feels gonna be pissed. <laughs> it uh, see, I can uh, the cuck arc delightful, the feet arc not at all. <laughs> uh, for for coverage, so that way this doesn't show up in the comment section. Jasmine Pierce is a staff writer on this show, and that is a person of color, which is an acceptable way to phrase that I hear in 2026. <laughs> I'm so mad at this movie for making four white people sit around and complain about it. <laughs> this really is like the ultimate annoying fucking liberal movie where it's like the most of this movie is like a bunch of white people written by white people produced by white people talking about how we need more diversity. It's well, it's, Look, progress needs to come from somewhere. Isn't the somewhere supposed to be a bad Mike Myers comedy? <laughs> <laughs> come on. He did it. Jesus. He healed the world. <laughs> with with <laughs> wild <laughs> stallions <laughs> rules. <laughs> I I feel I feel like it's 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 really important to point out that Netflix is currently in the process of cutting the throat of its entire animation division, but it made this. Yeah, and this is not as cheap as it should be given the script. No, that's no, one of this, the this weirdest looks parts. Way better than it is. Yeah, very bizarre. Like there's some rough green screening, sure, but they have way more money than you would ever expect. Uh, which brings me to a point, uh, Bob. While we were watching it, uh huh, uh, you you were like, "Do you think they?" wanted to do a cg shrek and then they looked at the budget and said nah <laughs> yeah. oh god can can we just pretend that didn't happen <laughs> i'm sorry that's the whole reason we watch this nightmare i i i don't get like the annoyance at the at the shrek, shrek moment it was like yeah that was that was it that it was a thing well oh, here's the God. thing it's, did it's, i remember that the, okay so there are two more layers to that where it's like it's not like that's the worst part of that show even up until that moment no not at all and there's this, there, you think it is i do oh okay well, well we'll discuss that in a moment uh there's the second layer of the whole reason this scene is here so someone clips it and puts it on twitter and then more people watch this so it worked perfectly you you, you think that was the worst God, part i do because that's about the point the point in the story where like up to then it had been this you know weird rolling ensemble piece of wacky shit that had happened and that's that's really when the oh he's like the main character of this story really solidifies and he's he's on his mission over in De Brunswick or wherever the fuck he is Dubrovnik and when Shrek shows up mm -hmm. it becomes very clear that this is Mike Myers patting him fucking self on the back for being Mike Myers and having this long story <laughs> career. And way to go, Mike Myers. You're the hero in the story, of the story, and metatextually in real life. And my fucking blood ran cold. Uh, they, they, sh they should have been brave. They should have been brave and made the Alex Jones knockoff Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was expecting because we knew about the scene. I was expecting more direct movie references uh -huh. like that. Uh-huh. And I feel like that's the point place where Mike Myers can actually do any sort of humor and like I said my interesting. I don't I think he just hasn't seen a movie in 20 years, so he didn't do it. <laughs> he didn't have any more movies to rip off. He just mm -hmm. the closest he had was remember Face Off? Right? <laughs> Uh, I would I would like to Good know for you. I love face off, but come yeah, on. well, they're yeah, making a sequel. So that probably oh. has something to do with it. OK, well, I mean, face off is good. I'm, yeah, I'm not a hater of face off, but the joke literally was remember face off. I would like yeah. to note the Shrek moment came after the Pizzagate moment. The fact that they, they had a hyperloop called the Musk. Uh, yeah, but yeah. How, what is oh what is this fucking, fucking show? What the, is this fucking show's message supposed to be when it's like Elon Musk's stupid fucking Hyperloop was right? Fuck you! <laughs> and then uh, also <laughs> the Sasquatch jumping in the in them slow mowing it terribly while playing the million dollar man jump sound. <laughs> right? So what the fuck was this, the point of that? This was all before that in that episode. So by the time I hit that, I'm just numb. <laughs> <laughs> like Shrek headbutts that Sasquatch. 
and I'd never actually <laughs> felt something drop two points before. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, w- w- Agra would have been better or worse if it was CG. Oh. <laughs> like, okay. I actually I Shrek CG there. <laughs> I am of the opinion it would have been way better because yeah, it would have been like, we don't give a shit that it makes no sense physically. We put a cartoon character yeah. on screen. Because if it was CG, it would have like actually been Shrek. Right. And that would have been <laughs> that good. <been> amazing. <laughs> Instead, they're just like, we don't have the money. Put on this terrible looking suit. <laughs> it's probably it's leftover from Universal Studios. <laughs> yeah, probably. They probably just borrowed it it's off the probably lot. probably Mike Myers. Oh, yeah, probably. Mm. It's like, I just own this one. Yeah. Yet, I feel... I I did not enjoy this to such a degree that I, while watching it, I went, okay, this part will be pretty good because I'm sure Phil fucking hates this. Like, whatever. When we got to the end of that last episode, I went, oh, he's gonna hate. <laughs> he's gonna go for Mike Myers' throat. Yeah, of the entire last episode, the best part is battling the j- failed German porn stars with wooden shields and crossbows. Yeah. Yes, that's, that was that's, funny. I think I think that and the part where the Netflix fix plicks thing Censors a Dick Cheney t-shirt and it says Bush Cheney because of course it would say that instead of Dick Cheney but it was censoring nothing but dicks before that. I think that's kind of neat. The fact he was wearing it as a diaper after that and that entire scene was terrible because as Agro's intro said is that a thing I needed? (laughs) Between that and the kids in the Hall revival I don't know what the fuck. Oh no that's the other thing yeah. I yeah. was going to watch that later. I've seen Kevin McDonald's jump. No! <laughs> Why? There's no fucking reason. Okay. Oh. I saw what happened in this one. I'm like, is this, did I miss like a session of Canadian <laughs> Parliament or something? Is there a kickback for showing door? your dick? <laughs> Trudeau, is this you, my man? <laughs> Roll of costume. Is it just... That they can get away with it on the streaming networks, so I guess. they do. So they're in love with that. They're this like, this is what like early been, '90s comedians are like. Oh yeah, we're doing internet stuff. We can do whatever now. We've been so oppressed by the American censorship system. Now we can finally show our penises. I, like, <laughs> finally. Yeah, they've and been that, waiting this whole time. Three makes, decades they've been waiting. It makes me think of those Austin Power jokes, where it's always just slightly not shown, which that makes it yeah comical. Funny. Whereas this is just like, here, here it is. And it's not and even they, here it is. Yeah, no, it's... It's, it's just room full cocks. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know why this is a joke. A penis. <laughs> you, you, you know funny. when, um... You, you know when, like... You, you ever watched Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm-hmm. And, and it's really obvious that they have run out of steam on this particular bit. They don't know what to do, but it keeps going. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, that's how that felt. Where it's like, we don't know what to fucking do for the... Re- do just just do this we're out yep god i'm just thinking like imagine if this had been like a movie and they could have cut an hour of mike myers talking to himself in that same fucking room why is every netflix show a bunch of people in the same location just talking to each other for like 60% 60% of the runtime i was shocked by how much of this wasn't that to be honest <laughs> Uh, but because it's cheap as hell, you make one set and reuse it as much as possible. God, there's so many terrible jokes. I'm not even going to touch. Just not, <laughs> not none. Good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to talk about one I like. Okay. When Ken, when Ken Scarborough infiltrates the Pentaveret, he talks to the person who does like the interviews and the initiation, basically. And then he goes, what's your name? And he goes, Ken Dahl. And then he asks him some Barbie specific questions. And I'm like, this is kind of dumb. But then when he breaks, <laughs> when Ken Scarborough breaks down at the end, he's like, look, I made up the name. Okay. <laughs> that actually got me when he's just like, please stop. <laughs> he doesn't even just like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I know. The initiation <laughs> dude just goes, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, I guess makes sense later. But... Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Unfortunately. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's, there are very few moments and they're so far. God, yeah. Like so much of this is almost funny. Yeah. Could be good. Is old ass Mike Myers. Well, gentlemen, 
unlike this show, I don't want uh -huh. to let this go on too long. Mm -hmm. Does Thank anyone God. have any last moments to share before we just shut this down by giving some scores and some summaries? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit the fucking eject button. <laughs> right? Get us out. <laughs> you know what? I think Agro may be the most positive among us, and that's probably a foolish expectation. We'll start with him. Dr. Agro. Oh. Which show is this? What are we doing? What's ten? <laughs> this is a base <laughs> ten show. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like this needs the curse content scale. Maybe that's I mean, just me. I mean, we definitely stumbled into that, but we can't we can't do that. Yeah. Because then you You're can't right, compare by it the across way, Bob, shows. You are right. Yes. <laughs> this this show, I mean, it 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 is primarily made up of a lot of SNL filler mm. material, and a lot of it is fine and some of it's oh that was pretty funny but the rest of it that gives it context the the major beats that it hits uh drag this whole thing down all the way to two <sighs> fuck this show for existing okay we'll move from there to kz i wanted to find something in this show to like like it all i start i start searching you know i'm not a not truly a hateful person most of the time, but all most of the jokes were so boring in, in this, and some of them were like the worst it's ever been. And in, in the past, there's been a bit that's both real and fake at the same time where I'll watch something and then it just starts leaving me. And usually that's like on a minute to minute basis and not a second to second. I was like, this is leaving now while I'm just looking at it. Uh, it's a one. This was truly horrible. Uh, Mr. Feel. Uh, this was exactly two hours and 25 minutes of mostly being dumb and inoffensive. And then it tried to defend Hillary Clinton in any fucking capacity whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, and, and personally, I find that woman so utterly despicable and so just cartoon, so responsible for so much shit wrong with the world right now that if I started listing it, you'd think I was making shit up. Um, <laughs> and th this shit would have been out of date in 2018 and it's tw now 2022. Like the world is on fire and you're making but her emails jokes. Go fuck yourself. Zero. Okay. Bob. This is two hours and 40 minutes of possibly the least funny thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, it's the worst thing we've ever watched from Netflix, which is a high bar. How did you do it? Um, I, I, I still think Bebop is worse for the record. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's even worse than that. Because Honestly, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Bob. <laughs> Your whole plate, I'd take Bebop over this. Yeah. But you both rated it higher than Bebop. Yep. Life's funny like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, it's a new okay. year. We're quirky now. Um, I, I, if we can give a zero, I'll give it a zero. Because the last, the other lowest thing from Netflix I have is Dragon's Dogma, I think, which is a one. And this is worse. Well, to be fair, Bob, you gave... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Dragon's Dogma. Where is that score? Okay. There we go. Yeah, you gave Dragon's Dogma a one. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'll punch in that zero for you. I didn't. Know, I didn't know we did zeros on 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 this. Specific that that's show pretty unprecedented. Just, I shouldn't allow yeah, it to be yeah, clear. We, <laughs> didn't we? Uh, didn't we get? Oh, didn't okay. we? Didn't we give Cowboy Bebop zeros? I could have sworn that happened. Is Bebop not I entered think, in, fact, in the fucking spreadsheet? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think it was it was zeros across the board. So maybe you felt like you didn't need to. <laughs> yeah, that's probably <laughs> what's up. It, from okay. the <laughs> it, it serves but, no but, purpose. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to move me, move me to a zero. I didn't know we could do zero. You know what? That's why I take Bebop over this. Hmm. Nothing better than a poke in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, I guess. Welcome <sighs> to the ouch. Thank God that didn't get a second season. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, the only advantage that this has over Bebop is it's not as long, and it's not ruining a pre-existing thing. Right. Right. Like, no one's going to come out of this being like, I, you know, the original Pentaveret series was so good. It's a real shame that they just buried it, like, ten feet under. I'm terrified somebody's going to, like, dig up the indie comic this is ripping off. <laughs> uh, I, I hate... 
I, I hate whenever it's like a show like this where it's clearly not going to get anything else. But when you Google it, they're like season one. Right, right, like, right. Don't you don't you put that evil on me? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a one. It's truly terrible. I think there are maybe six jokes I enjoyed in the entire two hours, 40 minutes. That's so dire. That's so much wasted money. <laughs> Uh, that ending the also. The Mike Myers. That ending also is just truly fucking awful. <laughs> yeah. uh, Phil was right. I was the most positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're by like a hundred percent on second place. Uh, that that gives the total amount of points for the show three. <laughs> What's that? Fifty with an average score of <laughs> point six. <laughs> <laughs> I I genuinely. That moment at the end of episode five where she's like, look, I have the tattoo for the secret society. I'll tell you about it. Looks at camera in the final episode. And I'm like, oh, you're about to make like the worst piece of film I've ever seen. aren't you?" <laughs> <laughs> they really lived up to that one. <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by the continued support of our executive producers, such as Esme, E. Lee Broyles. Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Burning Pepsi Man, Adam Admar, Cooper Tank, and Virmvarm. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these gamers. If you want to support Gigaboots so we can continue the content crunch, then head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.